It's Sunday, and I am unable to make some Sundays because of transportation. So I figure I'll sit down and do a lesson. And a lesson of all lessons today would be is not everybody in church is saved. Now, there are religions, that includes churches and mosques and whatever. There are individual people, there are even Christians who think everybody in church must be saved. And that's not true. Even Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction and straight is the gate that leads to life and few go in. Well, few that go in through the straight gate is not everybody. And we have a lesson today to show you that among godly leaders, having a group of people, in the group of people, army, ministry, we will find not all are of God. It's a hard lesson, but realize in your church, if the rapture would happen, not everybody's going. Realize too, you know what, according to 2 Corinthians 11, it's quite possible your preacher, your teacher, your priest, your rabbi, whoever is the, the, the head official of your church, they may not be godly either. They, they may not be right. Just because they got that position in your church, in your congregation, whatever you call it, doesn't mean they're right with God. Israel had a king named King Saul. He died and went to hell and was in the anger of God and was not for God at all. So Joshua 24 and 19 is our first place of Three places. And we're going to have a lot of reading today. Joshua said unto the people, or here's the leader, Joshua, to the people. You cannot serve the Lord. Now, this is the message. You cannot serve the Lord. What a message. He's a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Thank God we're under the, the age of grace. Thank God we have Jesus Christ. Thank God if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to, to forgive and cleanse us from all of our sins. This is Joshua under the law. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt, it's Israel, and the Christian who chastise you and consume you. He may take everything away from you. The, Paul writes about the Lord's Supper. There are some sick. There are some even dead. Because you have taken the Lord's suffer, Supper unfaithfully, unright conditions. After that, he will do you good. After that, he's done. So God's done everything good for us. God has been perfect to us. And then we turn around and we sin against him. I sin against God. By the way, if you see the oxygen, I apologize for the holes and all that. I'm on oxygen today. So the people said to Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Okay. All right, Pastor. Amen. We'll, we'll, we'll do right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you, the Lord. People in church, they say, You know what? We're, amen to the great message preacher. We're going to do that. We're going to go up to the altar. We're going to pray to serve him. They said, We are witnesses. Now, therefore, put away, said he, the preacher, in this story. This is an actual true story. This is not parable. This is not made up. This is a true event in Joshua's time. This is history. The strange gods which are among you, right there. All right, let's say this is a church congregation. The gods are right there. I mean, you may have the wise men visiting the baby Jesus. You might have the baby Jesus, Mary, and, and Joseph. You may have colored eggs. You may have hearts. You may have pictures of dead presidents. You may have pictures of bread, dead prophets and dead 
speakers and, you know, dead people for a cause. They died. You may have, you know, albums of, of animals and all kinds of things for the month. The strange gods which are among you, they're right there. You might be wearing them on your wrist, on your neck. You may have them colored or black and white on your skin. Maybe in your purse, your, your briefcase. It may even be in your Bible. You may have a picture of a man they say is Jesus and not Jesus at all. Incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. That's what a preacher would do. The preacher, the whole object of a correct biblical preacher is get your heart to turn to God. Not your head. Not your feelings. Cleanse your heart. Get you to repent. Get you to see God. Get you to move and do right. That's the job of a preacher. That's what exactly what Joshua was doing. And the people said unto Joshua, Lord our God, we will serve, and, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statue and ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in a book in the law of God, took a great stone, set it among the, the under an oak, and was by the sanctuary of the Lord. So Joshua wrote the law. Joshua wrote scripture, the scripture, the word of God uh, said rock, on a great stone. Whoa, would a preacher do that? You know, preacher gets up, you got a great congregate. We're going to we're going to confess our sins. We're going to get right. We're going to have a, a, a revival. We're going to change. We're going to do it right. He gets a big rock. He writes it on the rock. He puts the rock out in the front of the church. So everybody that walks in that church, maybe put it by the back door of the church. When you enter that church, you see that rock say, hey, on this day, we made this oath. To serve God before we open the doors and go inside that church. And before we open those, so we're going to confess our sins, even right there on the steps, on the walkway. Lord God, I have sinned this week. I have not done to what the oath we said we would do. Joshua said unto the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord, the rock. The rock heard. You know, Jesus said if, if their mouths would be, sh be shut, the rocks would speak out. You know the old time cassette tapes? Somehow, some way, I don't understand what it is. There is used on those cassette tapes, rock, stone. Be something interesting to look up. But the rock heard the words of the Lord, which he spake unto us. You gotta wonder if that rock was the rock that followed them in the wilderness journey that gave them the water. That rock is Christ, Paul said, which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest you deny your God. This is a great message. Joshua was telling the people, from your heart, you get right. You tell the Lord you're going to do right, and you do it. So Joshua let the people depart every man to his inheritance. So, it's funny because, look at here, Joshua said, verse 23, now there are put away, he said he, the strange gods which are among, the strange gods are right there, there they are, with them, on them, near them, whatever, incline your heart unto the Lord your God, and the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve, and obey, and his voice we will obey, so Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them through a statue and orange and check them. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of, of God, took a great stone, set it up there under the oak, the sanctuary of the Lord. And this stone is a witness. So Joshua let the people depart, and every man into his. You know what's missing? Joshua said, Put away the strange God. And people say, we will, we will obey. There is no recording of anybody. Taking away those gods. Look, 
Read 23 on. They do not put away those guys. So you know what happens in the church service? If this was a church, the pastor gets up there, he preaches a great message from the heart. Oh, you want to repent? You want to get right? You go up to your altar, you boo-hoo, you boo-hoo in, in, the, in, the, in the pew. You go in the back room, you boo-hoo, and you cry, and you, you do everything you want to do. And then you walk out the doors and you live the same very life that you live when you walk in the doors. You didn't adhere to the message at all. You are the same person that you came in as. Friend, that's a congregation that's dead. You heard the message. You had a, a moving experience. You had a feeling. Maybe your heart. Maybe your stony heart. And you got emotional and you cry. And the pastor wrote down 25 people, 30 people came up to you. And you walked out of that, that, that church. You walked out of that assembly. And you were the same person you are. I've done that. I have put. On the altar a long time ago, a pack of cigarettes. Lord, I'm giving up these cigarettes. I give it up. I get out of church, get in my car, start the car up, and head to the convenience store and buy me another pack of cigarettes. Thank God, 1990s, late 1990s, I got it written down somewhere. God took away the cigarettes from me, not me. I'm not saying these people are ever going to get right later, but they walked out of the church service unchanged. And it looks like nobody got rid of the strength of God. And Joshua the preacher said, they're right there. I see them in the pew right next to you. I see them on that table in front of the altar. I see them up on the walls. And we don't take them down to after the holidays. You don't ever get rid of the, 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 the idols that you're wearing. The idol, you are not remorse for the idols that you have printed on your, on your skin. You're not for the, the shirt that you wear. The idols that you're going to go Sunday afternoon. You're going to throw the ball. We're going to drive left, 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 left. Whatever your idols be, you didn't get rid of them. You're not doing right. You're not living right. You're not right for God. I mean, even like I said with the Pakistan, even they threw the gods down, and maybe afterwards or the next day, maybe they go and get a new one or use one. They gave an effort. See, God gives the effort. It's not, oh, look at that. Stolly went and bought another pack. Hey, listen, Stolly threw that pack on there. He was serious. Serious enough that in 1990s, God said, okay, you're done with that. I was saved 1987. 13 years. Sometimes it takes a while for those gods to get away. Cigarette is a god. I want to many people have done that. They laid their gods down and then just go back. They laid their gods down and they go back. And they just never, never, never allow God to give them up. Not, it's God, not you. When you rest assured that God and not you can get rid of those sins. I'm battling with a sin right now. I did that sin last night. I'm not happy. I'm not bragging. And evidently, I'm not ready to give it to God. I'm sorry to say that. I want to give it to God. I want to give up the cigarettes to God. God's going to do something in my life to make me give it up. So he can get rid of it, not me. So he can get the glory. I go to John 13. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that the hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, Having loved his own, which were in this in the world, he loved them unto the end. Right? Jesus is on his way to Calvary. After supper ended, the devil 
having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things unto his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. Now when now he rising from the supper, laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After he had poured water in the base, he began to wash the disciples' feet and wiped them with a the towel wherein he was girded. Then cometh to Simon Peter, and Peter says unto him, Lord, dost thou not wash my feet? Peter said, What well, I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said to him, Thou shalt never wash my feet, Jesus answered him. If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Peter said, Lord, not my feet only, but also my feet and my head, all of me. Jesus said, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet. Feet get dirty, your Christian one. But is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. All right, he's got 12 men with him, 12 disciples. We're not looking at Peter. He just washed the feet of all the disciples. Peter's like, hey, Lord, don't wash my feet. Said, listen, if I don't wash your feet, you're not walking with me. Peter's like, oh, wash all of me. He said, listen, if you're washed, if you're in the blood of Jesus, you're cleansed. That walk, like I said, I've seen that walk needs to be cleansed, needs to be confessed. First John 1, 9. But he's saying, you know what? Among the 12 of them, somebody's not clean. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore, he said, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed his feet, he had taken his garments and was set down again. He said unto them, know ye what I have done to you? So he's talking about washing his feet. He's talking about not really washing his feet, but your Christian walk. But he says, not all of you are clean. Twelve. And we're told who the twelfth, the one who's not clean. Judas. Simon's son. Will betray him. You got twelve men that walked at least three and a half years with him. Jesus. They listened to him. They lived with him. They ate with him. They fellowship with him. They asked him questions. He answered her. Judas is among the twelve. When Jesus sends the twelve out, Judas heals, Judas raises the dead, Judas preaches the gospel, Judas is one of the disciples of the twelve that go out and preach. When you come to the end of the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry, twelve men. And one of them at the end of the three and a half years. He's not even saved. He's not even a Christian. He's not even right with God. He turns his back and he sells out Jesus. You may have somebody in your church. Faithful and right. He'll betray Jesus. He'll betray the church. He'll betray Christians. He will betray the teachers. He'll betray the pastor or whoever's head of your church. There's always somebody. There's always somebody that will come in and try to split the church. There'll be somebody that comes in and try to cause trouble in the church. Judas had the best preacher. Judas had the best guidance of all. And he still sinned. You thought it would be Peter. But it's not, see, you may, you may think that person is wicked and vile and wicked. No, 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 no. You may think that person is holy and right. No, 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 no. You don't know. I know somebody today, I'm, I'm, I pray, Lord, I don't know if they're saved, but their conduct shows they're not. Lord, you and that person knows. I don't know. I'm going to pray for their welfare, but I'm going to pray for salvation first. But I don't know. When, he, when they're at the supper, he says, the one that dips the sop with me, and then Judas dips the sop. If Peter would have known what Judas was going to do, Judas would never have had opportunity to do it. Because if Jesus cuts the ear off a man trying to arrest Jesus, Peter would have killed Judas. Not one of those disciples knew what Judas was going to do in the end. 
They don't even know the night that Jesus had the Last Supper. They don't know. They don't realize it's Judas until they're in the garden. You may have someone you... They may be saved. They may be unsaved. And they look good. And they act, maybe they're right. Maybe they're walking right with God. And then, you know, one day they just give it up. The world gets into them. The devil gets into them. And then the devil can get the Christians. And you know what? They turn around and betray you. They betray the church. They betray the leadership of that church. And I'm not talking about somebody who goes in there and tries to get the church right. Not somebody like me. I go into a church and they're involved with wickedness. I will show them with the scriptures. I, I will teach them what is right. And they think I'm wrong, but that's no problem. They'll find out they're wrong. I'm talking about somebody will come in that church, and they'll look, they'll act and look and great. And what they want to do is they want to eventually they want to get that pulpit. They want to get that Sunday school class. They want to bring people out. They want to get that woman and then you know ruin her rest of her life. They want to get that man and then, and then ruin the rest of her life. They get in there, they want business prospects, they want customers. That's sad. I, I've seen that in the church. They're only there for business. You got to realize not everybody in the church is saved. And then you have a congregation like Joshua had. Gets an amen, hallelujah uh, message. And, and let's get right. Let's get our heart right. We'll do it. We'll do it. And they walk out and they don't do anything at all. You got the best preacher. You got 12 men who has followed him his entire life. He has his last supper. And one man walks away from that supper and goes away and says, okay, give me my money. I'll tell you where he is. Whatever that person will, that will ruin that, that one person, that will ruin that family, that will ruin that church, that will ruin that pastor, that will ruin the pastor's wife or the pastor's kids. Or the Sunday school teacher, or the treasurer, whatever it is, they go in, and in the end, it turns out whether they're saved or lost. Whether they're, it wasn't Judas's intention in the beginning. Boom. Someone in time that that person has turned to a turncoat and destruction. And it may be the least expected person you would believe. Maybe one day your pastor turns and says, you know what, we're going to leave the King James Bible. And we're going to... I don't know. But there's one man in a, in a church gathering of people, 12 members, one of the D greatest, best, Godly, who is God himself, preacher. One of those men. Turncoat. And they did not know who it was. He had a great message by Joshua. Nobody did right. And left. Went out the back door. You got the God preacher. God minister. He's got 12 men. At his last meal. You know, everybody talked about the last supper. One of his members went out and betrayed, and that was it. Jesus is betrayed. He's brought before a kangaroo court, brought through the and he ends up on a cross, dead in the tomb, resurrected the third day. Judas goes out and hangs himself the night that he betrayed him. Cause a lot of sorrow, a lot of misery. Joshua. We got another Joshua. Joshua seven. Seven one. 
They got the whole nation of Israel again. But the children of Israel committed a trespass and the curse of things. Now God had told them when they when they were in Jericho, all is to be destroyed. Everything. You don't take nothing. Excuse me. You're going to say something in your church. You're going to be a church bylaws. Your, your church rules. Whatever. You're going to have a. You're going to have a rule. You're going to have something in your congregation. Somebody's not going to listen. God said outright when it comes to Jericho, burn everything. It's not yours. The, the, the metal and all that belongs to God. But the children of Israel committed trespass and the cursed things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zadai, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took a cursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. One man. One man, Judas. It took one woman, Eve, and her husband. That we have hospitals. I say that because I just hear an ambulance go by. Every time I hear an ambulance, I pray for all those involved. When I hear a police car go by, I pray for everything in the safety of those police officers. Got a hospital right there. I've been in a few times, and I, my wife was in it many times. One wife and one husband, we have a hospital. And we got all kinds of different churches, and they're ungodly and unranked. One man came. Joshua sent men unto, from Jericho to Ai. This is going to be the second city they're going to attack. Ai. Today, Ai means artificial intelligence. <laughs> Jericho is the cursed city. Then you go to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel. Well, that's where Jacob, house of God, spank unto. And then go up and view the country, Ai. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Let us not all the people go up, but let us about two or three thousand go up and smite, smite Ai. A little pride there. Look, look how great we are. Look how wonderful we are. But make not all the people to labor that are, we just want to feel. So there went up to the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men in Ai Smote of them about 30 and 6 men. All right, because of Achan, let's look at it right now. Achan sent. Already now, 36 innocent men have died because of Achan and his sin. Now we're looking at a man, and we'll say church. It's not a church, but let's say a man in the church. One man has destroyed 36 people. 36 men. Don't know if they're married. They're married now. The wives and, and their children, their children. 36 men whose mothers and fathers lost a, a son because of one man. All the world is in sin because of one woman, Eve, and then Adam. Already, because of AI sin, excuse me, Achan sin. A man in the congregation of Israel, 36 of his brethren have died already. Now we're taking Israel as a church. They're not a church. I'm spiritualizing it. Verse 6. And Joshua rent his clothes to the preacher, the minister, the pastor, Fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of God until evening time, 6 p.m. He and the elders of Israel and put dust in it. They are weeping. They are crying. There is a loss in the church of life, and there's a loss of the army. The church is called an army. The church is outfitted with armor. We go into battle. We, as a church, lost 30, 36? 36 men. Let me write that down. I keep on knowing. 36. I can't write three. My condition. 36 men. 
The pastor falls down. He's weeping and crying. 36 men. Today, you can't even get a pastor to visit one man in the hospital. It's a burden here in Florida. They'll go to, they'll go to uh, Georgia. They'll go to Alabama. They will go to Mississippi for a, for a pastor's conference. But they won't go the extra mile from their church, their house, to see one man, one woman in the hospital. They won't even go far as go and have Sunday evening service. As many churches are closed Sunday night. Many churches don't even have a weekday service. They don't even venture out to have a midweek service. They don't even venture out to go door knocking or go out soul winning. They'll go to an amusement park. They'll go to Mickey Ratland. They'll go to a movie theater. But they won't go out and do the Lord's work. Joshua is on the ground. He's weeping. He's crying. He says, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou brought this people over Jordan to deliver us in the hands of the Amorites, the enemy, to destroy us? Would to God we had been content to dwell on the other side of the Jordan. <laughs> That's the wrong prayer. And the Lord says, oh, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou upon thy face? We just lost the battle, Lord. We lost 36 men. God says, Israel has sinned. Israel? Achan sinned. One man sinned, 36 are already dead. Israel, the entire congregation. Do you realize you're one person in your church and your sin? God can say, blank Baptist church has sinned. Maybe because of you. Maybe because of somebody in the church. Maybe one family in the church. Maybe the pastor. Maybe the piano player. Maybe the Sunday. Somebody in your church. God says, your Baptist church, your church. Speaks to the pastor. Your church is in sin. Entire congregation, one person, 36 has already died. The pastor's on his face. The pastor's praying. The pastor's in tears. And God says, get up. Your congregation sinned. And really, it's one man. Don't you ever say, my sin, no one suffers from my sin. My sin is my sin. And no one. That's a bunch of crock. One man sin, everybody suffers. You bring that, that unconfessed sin into the church house, that ruins the message. When you sin, you're bringing in the devil. You're bringing an unclean spirit that's sitting there with you in the church. God ain't sitting with you. Glad to see in church aid, Jesus Christ is outside the church door knocking. He's not inside. Satan's inside. Many churches today, Satan's inside that church. You may be a proper Baptist church, but you got Satan's technology, you got Satan's tech uh, techniques, you got Satan's warfare, you got Satan's devices. And I'm going to say it. People don't want me to say it. It could be as simple as Halloween. It could be simple as Easter. It could be simple as Christmas. That's not Christian. Uh, you know, I know Jesus wasn't born on, on December 25th. Well, what are you celebrating it for? Oh, I know you, you say, well, I, I don't care. We like it. We're going to do it. Okay. Don't invite God in because he's not coming in. The congregation sinned. They had transgressed my covenant toward which I commanded them. For they had taken the accursed thing and had stolen and disassemble. You left the assembly because of your sin. You have stolen something. It is not yours. You have separated yourself from the congregation because you sinned. May is not stealing. Oh, you could have stole someone's wife. Maybe you treated somebody unfairly. May you deceive this week or last week. 
or keep the seal. Maybe you are involved in the sins that even Paul says the Christian is not to do. And you haven't confessed it. I confess my sins. Sometimes I confess them in tears. I don't want to do it. I'm tired of doing it. I'm tired of wanting to do it. I shouldn't do that. Here's a man, he sinned. You know what he does? Excuse me. You know what he does? He leaves the assembly. He leaves the church because he sinned. Some people don't come to church because they sin. Some people go to church because their ball team sins by having it on a Sunday. You know, people said to me, I know I got health issues, but I, I preach at the Daytona 500 since we've been here, 2011. I'd say 2012, we began to preach on the streets of Daytona 500. We had a couple times we couldn't make it. And the ch churches, what are you doing that for? I had a church get mad because I skipped Sunday mo one Sunday morning to go preach on the streets at Daytona B uh, 500. I skipped his message. And then people say, why did you go to Daytona 500 on a Sunday morning? To because they're not in church. And their church may have not ever taught them the gospel. We're going to teach it on the streets. We're going to get gospel tracts out. We're going to preach. Oh, God, don't bless that. You want to make a bet? We were outside the front entrance. The, one of the main streets of the Daytona 500 by turn three or four, no, turn four. And where we were was in front of the mall. And, you know, people would park in the mall in all the area. Where we, so, so, yeah, where we sat, I sat or stood before I, I became lame. My daughter and my family would pass out gospel tracts. I would be in one spot, whether standing or sitting. And they had a traffic cop. That would use the, the, the do not and the walk sign for people to cross the road. When people gathered in big lines, I would preach. When the sign said go and cop, the cop would let them go, I'd you know, get a drink of water, sit down, rest for a minute, get my voice back. And when, when they said stop and they started getting three people, four people, i stand back up and I started preaching. As soon as the sign said go, they go. I get myself a drink of water, sit down, rest, do whatever. You see, that, that did. Oh, they heard me. While waiting for to cross the street, they heard me. That cop who, who helped direct those people across the street would hear six hours of preaching. And I had a couple of Daytona police officers give me a thumbs up after a while. I like it. They're not, many of them are not ever going to hear what they heard on the streets. Not and Many of them are going to get a little piece of booklet, a comic booklet, to tell them about, none of them are ever going to get it like that. Aiken has stolen. Aiken has done the, the wicked thing. God, wait, Aiken has done what God said not to do, and now he's not associating himself with the congregation. You need to pray for people who don't go to church. It may be sickness. I, I am not in church today every other week because my daughter works as a nurse. I am unable to get to church, and I've asked my pastor two to three times, and I got no answer back. I may be going into a nursing home. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, not maybe. I need to go into a nursing home. I'm looking at one at Port Orange to be close to my church. Hopefully, I can get somebody when my daughter can't pick me up. I want to be in church, but I can't. But there are people you got to pray for it as sickness. Or it could be sin that's keeping them away. That's sad. Look at verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Your congregation may not be able to face the enemies of the devil and the world. Maybe one member. And he may not even be in church all the time. But turn their backs before their enemies. They went the other way. They're running from. They became accursed. 
Neither will I be with you anymore. God, in the line of the scene, church age, Baptist church, God may have walked out of the back to the church, closed that back door, and you want to do right, you come out here. I'm not going in there. And God is not going to go in your church because you've got a cursed thing. I'm going to tell you, you're not going to want to hear it. You already heard it. It could be Easter or it could be Christmas. That's, a, that's idolatry. That does not please the Lord. So God's going to tell him, and we're, we're not going to read over it. Well, he says, shall be he that taketh the curse of things shall be burnt with fire. That's the law. Don't you dare capitalize somebody in your church because they've done something. Because he has wrought folly in Israel. He's transgressed. You know, you don't give him capital punishment in this day and age. The law said if you slept with your father's mother, your father's wife, you're to, you're to, you're to kill him. There was a man in the Corinthian church that slept with his father's mother. Paul turned him over to the devil. Second Corinthians, he's gotten right. He's repented. He's returned back to God. And Paul says, you're to take him back. You're to pray for him. You're to help him. Don't kill him. Church age is different from the law. So everybody's brought out. And he brought in the household man by man, Achan, the son of Conman, the son of Zadai, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. Joshua said to Achan, my son, I, I, my son give, I pray thee, the glory to God of Israel. Make thy confession. Confession. Now here's the preacher saying, come on, man, confess it. They don't even talk about confession and repentance, anything in the churches today. Tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. The preacher, Joshua, didn't even know what Achan did. Your preacher doesn't know what's going on in the sins of the people of the church. And God is charging the church and the preacher may not know. You may be doing something that nobody else knows, but the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. What? Your mama may not know, God does. What your spouse may not know, God does. Whatever your pastor doesn't know, God does. God knows what you're doing. And you may be affecting your church. You are an infection. You are a cancer. And what Paul says, you may be a cancer in the church that needs to be cut out and discipline. Only way to fight cancer, one of the things is you got to get the cancer out before the cancer moves on and does things to the body. I apologize, this thing is itchy. Church is to practice discipline on certain sins. You don't keep the cancer, you don't keep that open sinner, that open sinner, that closed sinner, aching. Causing trouble in the church. Some of your church troubles may be a sinner. Maybe sinners, maybe a sinner. Achan said to Joshua, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. It's too late now, but tell, and thus I have done. I saw among me a spoils of God goodly Babylonian garment. You mean a piece of garment is destroying the church? It's the little things. It's a little pornography on the internet, your phone. Oh, you may dress right in church, but, you know, when you go to the workplace, I can't believe they sell these jeans that are cut up. I saw a pair of jeans that we were at the laundromat the other day, and I could see her hiney. Yet the whole jeans were all made to be cut like that. I don't know if she wasn't wearing underpants or flimsy look, but her, her butt cheek could have been seen. The 
Listen, I had a preacher's daughter come up to me, street preaching, scream and holler at me. My dad's a Baptist preacher, and I can't believe what you're doing. I was like, does your dad know what you're doing? 200 shekels of silver. Well, Judas did for 30 pieces of silver. And a wedge of gold. For 50 shekels. You know, that guy could be ruining your church because of one car number on a racetrack. One team fighting over a football. A child that gives into skimpy outfits for dancing or for whatever. There was a program I never watched on TV, but they would have their, their little girls get all dressed up or, did, or some kind of show, some kind of. And I've seen pitch, you know, on the news when they show you the next day, this is the highlights of the television. I've seen some of those skimpy outfits. And that's just pure sick. I want to have me a Christian. I've had it on the streets of street preaching. I've had women come up to me. You can see almost all the way their boobs. I've seen them with pants that go all the way up the front and all the way up the rear. Well, I'm a Christian. And the problem is your modern church movement today, they would allow that in the in the church. You get your you know, the church, some churches, if a woman came in a bikini, they throw them out. Well, okay, if they're visitors, I wouldn't throw them out. But if they become members and they show up every Sunday morning in a bikini to go to the beach afterwards, something needs to be said. It's a little things. 30 pieces of silver brought Jesus to the cross and death, the tomb, and then the empty tomb. 30 pieces of silver. It could have been one little tiny idol that Joshua preached to the entire congregation. And they kept that con they kept that idol and they walked away and they, nothing happened. The next book is Judges for Joshua. And, man, and you want to talk about apostasy. Judges. Every man did that what was right in his eyes. Why? Because they walked out of Joshua with their idols and walked into judges with whatever they wanted to believe. The preacher died. Here they are, Joshua again, and he's preaching to Israel. And one man, one man's already killed 36 men for what? A garment. 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold. Because God said, don't take nothing. That's what he took. Three, three pieces of an item. You can destroy a church, and I've seen this happen. You're the piano player, and you start having an affair with the pastor. A church that went, went over the news, destroyed, because the pastor had an affair with an underage girl on his office floor. There are churches that have been destroyed. The pastors had an affair, and they keep them as pastor. There's been trouble in the church. The treasurer has stolen money. There's been the church. The left side challenges the right side, the court. They split the church right down the middle. One set of congregation gets upset because it's the carpet's red and not blue. Family gets a congregation. Their daughter didn't get to play the piano. One family starts causing havoc with the other families. One group of women start talking about another group of women in nursery. They start spreading rumors. I had a church. Spread rumors about my wife, Lisa, and I. We were having an affair during Lisa's lunch. Kind of funny. Even Lisa's boss said, every time you at lunch, when Lisa was on the phone, she was talking to me. I worked third shift. She worked first shift. I would be 
up at lunchtime when Lisa was up. We'd be talking on the phone. I'd be watching the kids or doing something. Kind of funny to have an affair when you're talking to your spouse on the phone for a half hour. So Joshua sent men so they ran into the tent, and behold, it was hid in the tent, the silver under it. And so Joshua makes an iniquity, an inquiry, not iniquity. Joshua makes an inquiry. Go check this out. Pastor, if you hear something about your congregation, you hear something about somebody in your church, you go check it out. Don't you sit in your office. Don't you sit ignoring it. You go check it out and you deal with it. That's your job as a pastor. You know, you don't take that cancer out. My wife had two bouts of cancer. First cancer, they got it early. They took it out and she didn't need that much chemotherapy. Thank God. The, 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 the breast cancer she had, it went too far. It wasn't taken out in time. Within time, it traveled through the body. It went to her, to her face, her ear, caused damage. They, they thought it was Bell's palsy, but it, it was the cancer. And finally, it went to her stomach. And once it went to her stomach, she died. We didn't know it was there, the cancer. To I don't know if she had a mammogram. I forget what it was. Or the doctor ordered the mammogram. By the time it was found, it was too late. Pastor, by the time you find out what's going on in your congregation, it may be too late. If you were to did a little sin exam, if you heard the, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's rumors. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a sin that's been blown out of proportion, okay? But it's your job to go find out. So, sake of time. And Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, the sins, the daughters, his oxen, his asses, sheep, tents, and all that he had. And they brought him to the valley Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. Them with fire. Thirty-six men died. And all his sons and all his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep. Doesn't mention his wife. She may have been dead already. Sin will destroy your family and your goods. The wages of sin is death. There it is. His entire family. He said, why did, why did Joshua kill his sons and daughters? They might have known. And it should have been them that went to Joshua and said, you know, our father did something. Well, why the oxen and sheep and all that? Because the family of Achan, one man, sinned. 36 men have already lost their lives. Israel has already been troubled. We're going to set an example for the entire congregation. That pastor, when he sets that family up, and he writes that letter, and he makes a declaration of this family, this man has committed adultery against his wife, against his children, with this woman. This man is not allowed into this church. You're not allowed. to. to should not be allowed to have anything to do with this man no more or his business. He has sinned against God and he has sinned against this church. You're just setting him as an example. But it's too bad many, many preachers don't. I know a pastor who said, this man committed adultery. Not the first time he committed adultery against a wife. A wife. Divorced and remarried. And I'm writing a letter, read it before the church. This man committed adultery with this woman. Blah, 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 blah. No, the church should not have anything to do with this man. He's being de church. He's gone. And I saw the next day the pastor's car at that man's garage. They were best friends. I seen the wife and the children go. Pfft. 
And when you when I look at the, the face of the door, I'm not gonna say which one or who. When I see their faces on Facebook, I know they're not in church no more. Good job, Pastor. Good job. You destroy the family and you destroy the church. Now you're not even pastor in that church no more. You retired. Oh, well. The wages of sin is death. It's a cancer. It spreads. When my wife died, I don't know, I, I, I asked the cancer doctor, I said, this doctor, I said, the, the cancer's in her body, right? He goes, yeah. I said, what's it doing now? He said, it will eat the tissue until, I forgot how long, it, he says, until it dies. When, when your wife died, that cancer began to die. And it will eat the tissue while it's still living until it dies. The wages of sin is death, not only to the human being, but to the cancer. But sometimes it lives on. You may have committed adultery in your family and die. The wages of sin is death. Your wife is still suffering. And your children are still suffering. And the families are still suffering. At least the cancer dies. The sin may not. It may go on and on and on. Don't tell me your sin doesn't hurt anybody but you. That's a lie. 